Hey everyone, I'm making this video today about a kind of a for fun coding challenge that I uh, created and uh, this is just to explain a little bit more about how to use it and what it's all about. So let me, let me switch over to this screen. Um, this is for the maze generator uh, coding challenge and this is for JavaScript developers only I'm afraid at the moment. Um, but the idea here is that um, I've created uh, what I'm calling a, a staging area or a sandbox for uh, getting a visual feedback on what your program is doing. So, you know, we're used to like writing code where we just run test scripts or, um, you know, can see console.log output and things like that. Um, you know, of course, other than building web pages, but uh, I thought for a JavaScript pro problem, it might be fun to have a visual element where you can actually see your code in action running in running in real time. So the idea behind this program is that you're going to start with this problem is you're going to start with a grid of cells and all the walls are currently up between all the cells so uh, the idea is to remove as enough walls here so that you have a proper maze and so there's no one start point and end point in this maze um, but the idea would be that you could start from any cell in the maze and be able to walk uh, without without bumping into a, a walls to some other cell, you know, by choosing the right path. So let me show an example of a solution here. Um, this one chooses a cell in the middle and marks it as visited, which you can see in yellow, and then it tries to find other cells that are next to the parts cells that are visited and breaks down the wall to kind of expand the area of cells that are that are reachable from the center cell. And so it keeps going through that process and we can run it uh, in full speed here. Um, so you can see it's you know just kind of adding one cell at a time and it growing the area of, uh, of the grid that is reachable. We can actually change the speed that it runs it and there we finished it. And so in 101 quote unquote steps it's, it's taken down like the 99 walls that are needed to make this um, uh, completely uh, uh, proper maze. You know, so I could start at the upper left-hand corner and work my way down through the maze to the lower right-hand corner. So, uh, so the idea is to write your own maze building program uh, using this simulator. Um, so what you're going to do is um, use CodePen. So this will create a code pen uh, template. This uses a code pen template so you can create your own code pen. I think many of you have used those before. Um, I'll just kind of show an example where you can um, write your own HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. In this case, the HTML and CSS, you, shouldn't, you don't need to touch those, um, but if you just open up the JavaScript panel, you can see there's some code at the front that you need to leave in. This is, this is uh, hooking it up to the sandbox program that I wrote that draws this grid. I did want to add one thing about CodePen. When you get to the CodePen site, your page may not look like this. Um, if you go to the upper right, you'll see this layout button here. And you know your layout might look like this or, or uh, this one, but uh, I would choose the one on the left which puts all your code on the left and then gives you has room so you can see the simulator on the right. And then down below is where you'll write your solution to uh, creating a maze. So the way you approach this is uh, there's an API. So your solution function is going to get passed in uh, an object which is the whole grid, uh, but it has an API for getting uh, access to individual cells of the grid, marking cells uh, that turns them yellow and that turns this mark either true or false. You can, you can use it to keep track of cells in the grid uh, and you can call an API that tests a wall. Uh, so when you have a given cell you can test to see if the, there's a wall already there in the up direction which is zero, the right direction, which is one, the down direction, which is two, and the, or the left direction, which is three. So it kind of goes around clockwise, starting from up as zero. Uh, you would pass in that direction element uh, to this function to test if that wall is already there or not uh, of a given cell. And then finally, you'll need to call remove wall 
to remove walls that uh, you want to uh, build your maze. So the whole point of this is just to write a function which will remove the 99 walls that are needed to make a proper maze, and a randomly generated maze. Um, so there's some hints down below which describe this algorithm, but let's just go ahead and go into the uh, code pen again and just uh, get familiar with what you can do in here. So in CodePen, you can, bi you can build, uh, you can write your code here and it'll just, it'll uh, adjust, you know, everything and run it for you automatically. So every time you like save something new, like say I would add a console.log, um, I'm going to, I'm going to print out, uh, I'm going to print out the word walls and then the variable walls. Um, now if I turn on the console, oh, not sure I can clear that out. Um, and then I go and run this. There you can see it's going through and you can see every time I remove a, or I go through that loop, I'm, I'm logging out the variable walls. The initial program that's in here right now in the code pen is um, not a proper solution to this problem. Uh, let's see if I can, uh, yeah, oops. So this actually goes through and just chooses a random cell and then removes one of the walls. That's it. So it doesn't really keep track of whether it's connecting it to other parts of the maze or not. So this doesn't really work. There, you see there are a lot of missing walls or walls that haven't been removed yet, areas that are not really reachable from everywhere, so a lot of dead ends. Um, not yet a proper maze, but I wanted to give an example of the, like using the code right here in the code pen. So the only thing you have to do in the code pen is just make sure that you leave a couple things in your solution function. You can delete the whole, this whole body of this for your code. Uh, but you, this uses a special trick in JavaScript. It's called a generator function. Um, and you don't really have to know much about generator functions other than to know that they just have to have an asterisk at the front of the name here. So you're going to name your code star solution and it has to take up single parameter, which is the grid object, which refers to this graphical grid on the side. Um, and here I keep, I uh, compute the number of walls I'm going to need to remove, which is the, the each of the size of the grid, in this case it's a 10 by 10 grid, but in general it would be 10 times 10 minus 1, so 99 walls would, would make a proper maze. And then it just goes through until the walls is our walls variable is 0, chooses a random row, a random column, a random direction, gets the cell, so this is using the API grid.cell uh, to get a uh, object, a cell object, which refers to just one cell in there. And then you can do things like set a mark variable. You can mark it to true or false. Uh, they all start off as false originally. Or remove a wall, or you can do that test wall function also if you want to test to see if a wall is there. Um, uh, it removes this wall in the given direction. And it it'll, won't let you remove walls that are around the border of the whole grid. Uh, and it'll console log those out. So if you if you turn on the console, you could see um, it, it says, well, the the cell at zero comma eight. You're trying to remove this wall. It's already been removed. So there's there's nothing else you can do there. Here, let me remove this console log out of here and uh, run this again. Uh, so I've made this kind of bigger so you could see. You could see the text in the console, so it'll tell you when things are are uh, not not able to be removed. And here I'm running it faster. So if you attempt to remove a boundary wall um, at the right edge, it says you're not allowed to do that. Um, that sort of thing. So anyway, that's the challenge. Uh, so yeah, just remove this code. Oh, and I forgot one other thing. In a generator function. The whole point of the generator is that you can stop it in the middle of the of the function and then restart it again without losing any of the variables that are that are set up in the function itself. And that's that's how I'm able to actually draw all the intermediate steps of your program uh, while it's running. So 
all you have to do is put a yield statement in your inner loop. Like so after you've done some work like removing a wall or marking a cell, you can just call this yield function and then it'll my code will then redraw everything you've done to that grid and then and then uh, start you start your function up again to do the next step. So so the last thing I wanted to show is if you'd like to use DevTools to debug your solution um, in the debugger. Let's see, Control Shift J. Oops, Control Shift J. Um, what I do, I think sometimes if I refresh this page and um, you will find a top level, if you go to sources, you'll find a top level um, uh, domain here that it says code pen and uh, has the name of the saved pen. So like save your pen first. If you don't see this, I think try refreshing the screen. Um, you'll see this code pen and I think it's under the no domain section. You'll see a pen.js. So here's some code. This looks like the code that we have in our code pen. Um, so if I set a breakpoint here and then I go and run there we go, and I have my breakpoint, and I can single step through here and inspect variables. Um, I can do things like type the name of the cell that was returned and uh, take a look at the mark value of the cell and stuff like that. So uh, this is this is a way you can use the debugger. So it's a little difficult to just find where your code is in a debugger, but uh, it can be done. All right, that's the challenge, and I hope if you're interested, you take a look at the link is in the description of this video, and uh, let me know on Slack if you have any questions about it. Okay, thanks.